Ladies and gentlemen, it is Saturday. It is May 7th. It is 2011. What is going on? It is the Collegiate Star League Finals. That is correct. For any of you who have never, ever heard of the amazing Collegiate Star League, it is every college you could ever imagine duking it out in that classic pro league format to find out who is in fact the best educational institution at kicking people's asses in StarCraft 2. Over 140 schools from all across North America competed and today we get to find out the final two will be University of Waterloo from Canada against University of British Columbia from Canada. So that is right, everyone in the United States, gone, dead, and only Canadians do remain. And we'll be finding out who is the champion in a best of seven format today. For any of you who are unfamiliar with the classic Pro League format, it works as follows. Each team submits a lineup. They submit six players for the best of seven from games one through six. And then once all the lineups are submitted in private, the matches are revealed. So today we will be starting with a Protoss vs. Terran of uh, Complexity's Anti-Mage against Complexity's Style Life. We got some Zerg vs. Zerg action in Taldarim Altar in match two. A 2v2 in the third set. Never forget that team component. Going to be very, very critical because keep in mind that Super Ninja, the Protoss, an absolutely ridiculous 2v2 player, will be participating. So definitely will give his team a little bit of an Edge. We got XI Gerbil versus Validity Saga PVZ in match four. Kang Po versus Saiku, a PVZ in Zelnaga Caverns. And if necessary, we're going to be going on to GSL Crevasse with SC Monk and TQ Wannabe in a little bit of TVZ action. Keep in mind, these players aren't just duking it out for pride, aren't just trying to say who is in fact the best college. Although that is the important component, we would like to give a big uh, shout out to the fact that the number one winner will receive $2,000 in hardware from TT Esports, and the second place team will receive $1,000 in cash from Justin TV. That's what you're watching me stream on right now. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the match set. Now keep in mind these two colleges both have four grandmasters on their respective teams and University of Waterloo definitely going to be the favorite going into this match. Have a lot of talent, one of whom is banned from participating in this tournament. Combat X. However, they did manage to win a CSL season over UCSD. Have always been a top contender going into the playoffs. And this is, again, their second finals appearance. Now, the University of British Columbia also has four grandmasters. They used to be kind of a... Uh um, um, University of British Columbia used to be kind of a one-man team with style life really leading the charge. However, they've definitely upped their roster, but we're going to see the captain of University of British Columbia coming out first, Nova Style Life, who is now Complexity Style Life. He's a Grandmaster Terran with a 65% win rate. He's going to be going against Anti-Mage, who've been playing for a long time in the Collegiate Star Leagues as a superhero mega giga baller Protoss. He is also Grandmaster with a 56% win rate, but keep in mind, those win rates rates are for the ladders. I mean, we've seen that Anti-Mage is in fact 5-2 and two in his 1v1s, uh, and we see Style Life is 11-1 in his 1v1s. So both of them performing very, very well, but whenever you have a match where you get the chance to prepare, it's the player who has the better devised strategy that has fleshed that out more. Oftentimes, the player who is better on the ladder will not be as well equipped. Build orders and preparation are going to be absolutely key. So you know what? Without any further ado, let's jump right in to see who of these Grandmaster players is going to take the win for their team in Game 1. It is going to be on Metalopolis, slowing it down. Calm down, Day 9. Look at me careening through at 1,000x speed because I'm just so excited. Keep in mind, these two players are teammates. Style Life in the right position from complexity as the green Terran, and in the ghostly, ghostly pink, Complexity's Anti-Mage as the Protoss from Team Complexity. Now, keep in mind, Anti-Mage, uh, and actually, well, all players, have these little neutral supply depots that are at the bottom of their ramp, preventing any sort of goofy wall and antics, which means that Combat X's Protoss versus Zerg is immediately significantly worse on this map. That's right, Cannon Rush is one of the more popular strategies on Metalopolis due to the fact that you can cannon the main mineral line, but nothing of such will be happening 
in this game today. We see Stalag throwing down a supply depot surprisingly close to the ramp. Going to have to build his barracks behind that if he wants to have a complete wall. Anti-Mage doing the usual chrono boosting, uh, getting out as many probes as he can. Likely going to be going for a little bit longer term of play. Anti-Mage both in Brood War and SC2. Not a very, very cheesy player by any means. So we are seeing all the way up to 13 already. We'll be throwing down that gateway. And there it does go down. Chrono Boost returning back to the probe line. Meanwhile, Star Life is getting his barracks up. Don't know too much about Star Life's uh, playstyle against Protoss. He's more known for his uh, versus Zerg style, where he popularized the Star Life drop, whereby you drop Marauders on Banelings with Medivacs to try to get them to just kill themselves. So, looks like we're going to see uh, just a typical gas transition coming out of Star Life. No early expand whatsoever. And also Anti-Mage doing his usual gateway assimilator expand. Here's the check going on from Anti-Mage. On this version of Metalopolis, you can't have close positions by ground. So these players are doing uh, the, the opposite side scouting. Early expand is going to be extremely popular. Or perhaps in this version of Metalopolis, it looks like maybe no. It looks like Star Life going to go ahead and check that bottom left position. Perhaps doesn't know what version of the map it's on, or perhaps I don't know what version of the map it's on. Either way, we are seeing Anti-Mage poke in here. Wants to try to get a look around, and it looks like Stala I'm going to do the second barracks in the main. Oh, Anti-Mage steals the gas. Now, this is of questionable good or badness. Oh, no. Oh, Anti-Mage going to sneak out with that probe. Oh, my God. What a tragedy for the green Terran peoples to have let that probe escape. Ooh, Stala I'm even getting Jukarooped around. Now, this, I'm not sure if this is necessarily going to be good or bad. Obviously, the build order that we're seeing Star Life do does not require use of this second gas. However, Anti-Mage, by taking the second gas, automatically knows that there is not really going to be that many tech plays available. No big tank plays, no big Banshee plays that can come in as a result. So even though Protoss hasn't scouted this two barracks play, he almost certainly knows that it's a big uh, probability. He also knows that there is this reactor going down right now. Could be Marine Marauder. Could be a big tank play. Either way, we see Stahl Life's Tech Lab barracks going down. Will he get Stim first? Will he upgrade any sort of Concussive Shell? Looks like he's first favoring those Marauders. And there's the Concussive Shell. Perhaps going for a little bit of an aggressive opening. And uh-oh! Looks like we got a Stargate going down for Anti-Mage. This is actually kind of a... Um, Kind of an oddly placed Stargate positioning. Almost always you see the Stargate position here because of the slowness of Void Rays and the openness of this map, but he could likely be going Phoenixes. Either way, we're seeing just two gateways out of Anti-Mage. No three gateway cheese yet. That was quite popular. We saw Inca do that quite a bit against his recent Terran opponents. So we also see now that Star Life is pulling back uh, with those units. has finally picked off the Assimilator, but will definitely not be trying to do anything with it too soon. This is the very typical two barracks, tech lab, and reactor expand build. And here we see the Terran moving down his ramp. Doesn't quite have the money yet to do an expand. Might be going for an early push. And look at this! Phoenix is actually coming out from Anti-Mage. So definitely no sort of Void Ray play coming out at this point. He wants to do something a little bit more creative. And there's the third gateway from Anti-Mage. little surprised that neither of these players have opted to take an expansion yet. Either way, Anti-Mage sees the push coming and now he's building a Void Ray. Chrono Boost being spent on that Void Ray. Let's see if there's any way that Anti-Mage is going to be able to hold this off. Not that many units on the field right now for Anti-Mage. And that's quite a lot of units from Style Life. There's the Expansion Command Center going down for Style Life. Just definitely doing a little bit of aggression before he ends up taking that. Here come two SCVs. They're going to lead to help get vision for all these ranged units at the bottom of the ramp. And here he is trying to get into a good position. He's going to sneak up. And there's some sniping going down. Oh, very nice force field. Picking off the one SCV. Buying himself a little bit more time. And Star Life actually going to go for a contain. Very cool play. Cross map. He knows that his opponent has to have an expansion up early if it's going to be one of these cross map plays. So this is absolutely essential that he has this up. But it looks like Anti-Mage really in the mood to go for a little bit of a snipe. But no, definitely not going to be able to pick that off at all. Looks like there is a pylon going down a fourth gateway. Wow, Anti-Mage really feeling a little bit Forced to be all in at this point, getting more Phoenixes. He's continuing to scout around. If you're Terran in this position, you might suspect that this is a hallucination. 
But considering that he's seen the Void Ray, he knows that his opponent has spent some money on Phoenixes and is likely going to be a little bit of a waste. So yeah, look at this style life. Correctly salvaging the bunker, pulling everything back, already getting the Starport with that Essential Reactor to get the double Medivac play. And Anti-Mage, who is so desperately trying to mass up enough units to break a contain, suddenly finds himself in somewhat of an all-in situation. You have five unit producing structures on one base. Whoa, it looks like Anti-Mage did not want to be caught in that spot. Cancelled it immediately throws down his expansion nexus. And I will say, these neutral supply depots, I have almost like five times in this cast been like, oh, and he's hiding a pylon in the... Oh, mini-map. Oh, you and your ghostly pink anti-mage matching the neutral bunkers. What? What an inappropriate thing for a student to do. We do see Anti-Mage now pulling these Phoenixes back, trying to dart around, trying to at least check out what's up. The Phoenixes shooting at the factory, definitely going to be lulls worthy as they have successfully done 16 damage. Which, if you are a math student at a university, you will notice a square number. Ah, that's right. These aren't pro gamers. These are people trying to get degrees and be ballers at things like square numbers. We do now see Anti-Mage continuing to poke around really high Phoenix numbers. This could potentially be very problematic. If he lifts up all these key marauders, he's going to pick off that one SCV building the missile turret. One of these Phoenixes is on rally. Uh-oh, he does manage to pick off a mule, and he gets another mule. If he can get that third mule, that would be a huge boon, and it looks like, oh, losing one of the those phoenixes definitely not something that he wants to be doing those phoenixes are very fragile units and keep in mind the higher the phoenix count the lower the gateway unit count look at how few gateway units we see for the protoss player anti-mage from university of waterloo so we are seeing the University of British Columbia player Complexity Style Life begin to move through the center of the map. Uh oh Managing to see these Phoenixes. Phoenixes do a little bit of damage to the Medivacs. Poor things can't heal one another. Gonna move in with a little bit of damage and now it's up to Anti-Mage. He went for a Robotics Facility. Looks like he was hoping to get some sort of Colossus tech up, but he will not have enough time for that. He has to deal with this push head on. Good amount of units. There's the stim. Where are the rest of the Phoenix is not quite anywhere nearby. There's the somewhat late Guardian Shield going down, pulling back absolutely everything, trying to hope that the stim can wear off and he can force the double stim. But oh gosh, Anti Mage at an atrocious angle. There's the double stim from Stalock. Most of these units now deep into the orange health. That one single void ray, hoping to do a little bit of damage. Phoenix is now darting in, hoping to maybe get another stim from his opponent, but in the meantime, losing most of his units, losing almost all of his probes, and there it looks like the medevac will end up falling. But can Anti-Mage clean up this very, very unhealthy Terran army? Look at the oranges. Oh gosh, if I ever saw a human being that was orange, I would either think he was on the verge of death or was eating too much carrots, and it's definitely one of those two for this little troop from Style Life. We do see the UBC hero Style Life, once upon a time the one-man team, now one of just four Grandmasters on the team, one of the many leaders. Looks like he's bringing his school off to a solid start. Only just now getting the combat shield, but that is okay. He did the damage he needed with that timing push. Looks like Anti-Mage in a... Ooh, gonna be in a little bit of a better spot. He manages to take out some of these retreating units. Great job sniping those Marauders with those fast Phoenixes. However, we see Style Life has remassed a decent little army for himself. Has a couple Marines. Oh, you poor thing. You don't even have enough energy to stim. So you will drop dead. And at this point, it's going to be very tough for Anti-Mage to be able to make any reasonable decision that involves long-term play. Going to go for the fourth gateway, very clearly going for the all-in move. There is the Warp Prism now. Looks like he's trying to get some sort of unit out to do any sort of long-range warp and perhaps some harassment. But we already see Ghosts en route, the Mobius Reactor going down. A lot of Marines continuing to be produced. More gas getting harvested by Style Life at that expansion. And Anti-Mage is in a very, very rough position in the resource station. We see 75 to 50 in the income we see Terran a million billion 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 years ahead literally so that's going to be very difficult for the Protoss player to come back from and in the meantime it looks like we are seeing uh oh there's the warp prism going up <gasps> he's just going to try to circumvent all this with an elevator play just moving all of the units up to the high ground Oop. if you actually have a warp prism you can do a halfway drop you can load in units and unload them at the same time if you shift click properly it's a very fast way to transport units to the high ground. Very nice play by Anti-Mage, but keep in mind those Warp Prisms don't heal like those Medivacs. Style Life just marches forward and is ripping everything apart. One Barracks does manage to get picked off, but Anti-Mage hardly has anywhere to run. Style Life cleans up and good game. The University of British Columbia advances to 1-0. Anti-Mage ending up getting the loss. The University of Waterloo, the team to beat. Not starting out too hot, the new 
uh, the new team in the finals, University of British Columbia. Big pat on the back for Star Life for bringing him win number one. We'll be going into game two oh so shortly after this brief break. Don't go anywhere. This is the Collegiate Star League Grand Finals, and I am <gasps> day nine. See you in just a sec.